All right, so Justin's going to join me in the booth here to help commentate this match. Um, we have got Briar versus Fi. The card guys are on Briar. Team Kayfabe is on Fi. This matchup is usually a pretty pretty fast, aggressive one. We're going to need to see some channel mount heroics probably from the Briar side and some Art of Wars from the Fi side. Whoever hits their power cards first is usually a favorite in the match. Um, I believe Nathan has copies of this rounds on me in the deck, which could be pretty impactful, so... We'll see how that goes. I think the last time I played against Nathan with an aggro deck, he had this rounds on me. Yeah. So... It wasn't particularly fun to see it get played against me. <laughs> um, let's see. Justin, do you wanna do you wanna tell tell the people who you are? Hi everybody, I'm Justin. Um anyone from Georgia should know who I am. Um for the rest of you, I am the Kano player who Likes to terrorize the card guys. Yes, he is <laughs> absolutely. I like to terrorize Alex yes. because I always get paired into him. Yep the the gem gods like to pair us into each other. I mean, I was always fine with it. <laughs> yeah, well, wait until wait until we get paired into each other, and the gem gods still still keep doing it while while I have the good matchup side of the table. <laughs> uh, who are you on right now? <laughs> um, oh, I'm playing Icelander at the moment, but. That's fine. That matchup isn't as good as you want to think it is right now. Uh, into Kano? Yeah. No, I I would think Kano is actually probably favored. Uh, um, I've played it a few times with a new list, and I think I've lost once to like some really awkward hands and then some really nice spice for my opponent. Well, it looks like Nathan was able to resolve a this rounds on me on turn zero, which is pretty good, and still get an arsenal and push a point of damage. So that's always that's always solid. This rounds on me especially shines on turn zero because it, it basically eliminates the card draw for your opponent. That's fair. I was gonna say, is that right? But then you then I was thinking, yeah, he doesn't get to. Yeah, he'll end up like, with a four card hand. Yep, it is that's all value. Awful. Um. Did he put the tiger, or not the tiger, the um, phoenix flame in his actual graveyard? Did he not move it to the side for ease of access? I have no earthly idea. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. That's fair. I really hope he didn't just, like, completely forget to pull it out. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. I mean, it would be for Nathan. It would be an advantage, but that's that's not something we're trying to trying to take advantage of here. Oh yeah, I don't want it to happen. I'm, oh, at least he had the art of war to balance out this rounds on me. Yeah, a good old net even. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see spreading flames come that soon. Like, wait a second. <laughs> Let's see. The double strike would come in for one, with the uh, with the buff and minus, right? Yeah, just just stays yeah. even at the one. Yep. Um. What I think is interesting is that the Art of War doesn't affect the sword, but the this rounds on me affects the swords. <laughs> the sword still gets a minus two or a minus one. So that's pretty that's funny. Hilarious. This brand with Cinder's Claw is going to come in for a whopping two. Um, one thing to note is the five player is playing Mask of Momentum instead of Pouncing Links. Um, I'm, I think that's what they play in this matchup uh, pretty typically, um... but. I think it's better in this matchup because it forces some blocks where blocks weren't forced before. What color is that? I can't tell. That... Which one? The brand with Cinderclaw. It's a yellow. So it came in for okay. two. Yeah. The good, the interesting part here is that uh, the second double strike will also come in for two. It's not a one attack. It should trigger the, uh, the Shuka, the gloves. Right. Unless Shuko reads weird, I believe it does not. Um, second attack, two or less base power has plus one. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's your Phoenix Flame. So we didn't forget the Phoenix Flame. But if you'll notice here, uh, Nathan went ahead and blocked with his armor on turn one, which means that there's almost for sure a channel like, uh, or sorry, a channel Mount Heroic coming. <laughs> he plays channel like frigid. Um, the game, the game would be over. <laughs> Shuko triggered on Brand. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because of the first. Yep, that makes sense. Double strike into the into the Brand. Uh, Toma Harvest. Okay. Um, let's see if he has the channel to go with it. Toma Harvest channel is fantastic because it creates that embodiment of lightning and still gives you a pretty big hand to work with. 
You're like five seconds faster than me. Oh, I need to get you uh, into the actual lobby so that you can watch it in real time. That's what I need to do. Okay, I'm over here like, you said Tumble Power, so it's like, how the fuck are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, let me let me send you the deets. I appreciate that. Oh, I mean, I have to actually go join the lobby. But I still have Talos Do you have TTS on your computer still? I should. I can't imagine I actually uninstalled it for any reason. Yeah, I still have it. Well, he didn't have a um, ten rod for all it, but that's a uh, that's a pretty good turn there. I just sent you the details on uh, Facebook if you want to join the lobby. Yeah, this is a pretty monstrous, uh, a monstrous turn for no channel my heroic. But we have four off the scar, seven off the exude. Has go again, sword. So that's uh, what eleven? That's fifteen damage. Getting two block out of uh, out of the furnace here. So that's still a pretty close life total, to be honest. Um, was there any reason to block with the furnace here? Like, can you like? No, it's more of like the game goes so fast that really the two block versus the one block on the furnace isn't that relevant. It like the one usually hits the break points that you need to hit, so you just want to make sure you get full value out of the furnace as the match goes. Um, and if, and if you think you're about to do a bunch of damage, then you just want to go ahead and you know get get that block out of it. Yeah, I, was, I don't think he has any odd hits. Not any like relevant ones that can be stopped off of a two block. Yeah, yeah, it's it's usually not too relevant, and he he has mask and Shuko if he gets into like a bind where he needs to actually block for more. We blocking with mask is always one of those things where like every time I played against the ninja player, as soon as mask left the field, I was like neat. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good one. You'll you'll still find yourself like blocking the third attack or like wanting to block the third attack. Um, now this is a big old blaze headlong here. <laughs> I believe this one's coming in for seven. Oh, he played the rising. The yeah. Rising, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I missed the rise from the ashes when I was logging in. I was like, did he just attack with the blaze headlong? No go again with three cards in hand and an arsenal. No, he's just actually playing properly and putting the non-attack in the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, I was so confused. I was like, what the what happened here? Uh, I don't know. Double strike is the third attack here. Uh, the brand with Cinderclaw? No, oh, that's a brand with Cinderclaw. I'm just well, blind. Well, see, the reason he did it is why what you see now. Yeah, the um, entire... when, when you attack with one and you know your opponent has a one-block armor, the incentive to, is like very high to just block with the armor and you know you're going to get the draw off. So here comes one for three. Three go again. A pretty uh, pretty standard thing five does. One go again, four go again, three go again, three go <laughs> Yeah, the sad part is like he's already at 15 on the chain on damage, like yeah. 16. Like he's... This one I believe comes in for two with Shuko. But Nathan took the damage, so if he didn't have the channel before, he's probably got it now. That Phoenix Flame was um, put in his hand from the... From the Rise. Yeah. So what's interesting here, and I've, I've done this a few times with Vi, if he would have attacked with the Phoenix Flame instead of the Brandwood Cinderclaw, he could have done the same play with the Ancestral. And then he could have closed Chain to put Phoenix Flame back in Graveyard made the same two attacks and activated Phi to get another one damage. Mm. Because he didn't use Phi to put the Phoenix Flame in his hand, right? He got it with the... Um, I believe so. I believe so, but I'm not sure if he actually ended up putting it... Like, if, I'm not sure if he ended up playing it twice that turn. I don't think he did. I only saw him play it once, so like... Because you, you have to play it at the right spot in the chain to get it there. Yeah. But his third attack happened to be a one attack anyway, which is what Phoenix Flame is. Right. Unless Phoenix Flame... No. I know I didn't. I'm dumb. Phoenix Flame isn't a ninja attack. Oh, yeah. He wouldn't have been able to... Um... Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Cool. Looks Ooh, like we bad. might be getting a Snapdragon Scalers on the Snatch here. Welcome to the booth, Will. Welcome. 
Oh, he's running the AB1. You know, I have come to the conclusion that I don't think that's correct, but we'll see how it goes. Against Briar? Yeah. I gave up on blocking AB from Briar with anyone that doesn't just have it on their equipment a long time ago. <laughs> I was like, this, is, this just makes me want to block bad things, and like, I feel like it loses me damage or block value across the game. I think it's more of a, like, uh, save your ass card, where you get correct. towards that end game, and you kind of, like, have that, like, stalemate with, like, the you take damage, I take damage, you know, like, and if you, your prior opponent can get you low enough and just block and make a rune chain and kill you, then yeah, uh, that kind of puts, puts you in an awkward situation. I, um, I'm not a disciplined enough player to see Arcane Barrier on my side of the field and see Arcane Damage coming at me the entire game and not use it. Even though I know it's probably wrong to use it at times, I'm just like, I don't want to. And this is pretty funny here. Um, snatch, snap into snatch. <laughs> nice. Will, he's saying uh, that the yellow brand was um, buffed by Shuko. Yeah. Uh, it was, because it's base power, not total power. Correct. Which oh, is another snatch. Anyway. Oh, Nathan, you <laughs> stud. Will, if you want to join the actual TTS lobby, you can watch it in real time. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, yeah, if I can... Or, uh, Alex, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Alex over here calling out cards that haven't appeared on my screen yet <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah, like, he's like, oh, it was Tom of Harvest. I was like, I still don't see a Tom of Harvest. Do you Tom of <laughs> I will say um, the Arcane Barrier that he is using, the, the one, is almost the same as just... Because doesn't he normally run Snappies in that spot? Yeah. And I can't really think of, like, many cards in the deck that doesn't have go again. That's not, like, Salt the Wound, which you'd use your Snapdragons on anyway. And Tide Flippers still touch those. Yep, Tide Flippers is there mostly for Lava Burst, Salt the Wound, and Blue Snatch if you play it. Um, so, like, you're not losing out a whole lot on not having to... Did he just block with it this round on me? Yeah, for four. Ooh, lovely. That is the power of three block blue cards. And Briar has a way of making them block for more. Hey, at least um, it's not like in the olden days where that yeah. uh, that on me block for eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll block your crippling crush with one card. <laughs> I didn't see any problem with that. Nathan's actually in an okay spot here. It just depends on how the cards are coming. I don't like that he's blocking now. Yeah, he. The problem is, is he just doesn't have tempo. Um, he's gonna have to find a way to squeak some tempo back in his favor here. Yeah. Um, he's getting he's getting very fortunate that his opponent doesn't have very like very powerful arsenal cards. I mean, that could be what he's going for here. Is like, ooh, blue brand, interesting. It could be he's uh, setting up for um, what's oh, it called? Okay. Chain of Mount Heroic. And then he just has to live a round of attacks to have tempo back. So if he's running blue brand, then he isn't fully on the Rakowski package. Very interesting. Lightning Search from Arsenal here is very, very, very helpful with tempo. A wonderful way to start the turn, absolutely. This is this is what he needs to get back into the game. Nice. Alright. Um don't think he he's reflex, does he? I, well he couldn't yeah, I don't think he plays reflex, but I think he's playing press. I'm just not entirely sure. I just made I played against like the ninja players have scarred me. I see a tunic on one and a snatch coming in. I was like, he has a card in hand, a trace reflex every time. So here's an interesting spot. Uh, Nathan actually set him up set himself up for success here. He can get the one card blocks for here, and then he can crown of providence, whatever is going to trigger Mask, potentially, and have a four-card hand while his opponent's at 11 um, to threaten lethal and get tempo back. But it looks oh, like he's... He yeah, no, he, he's... It's, it's a, just a solid block three. So Nathan does have his buyer list, usually. Um, I'm not sure if at this moment he does. Built to block very well, um, where he's okay trading a couple of cards. Wow. So he's blocking for seven with two cards, which is above eight. Um, and then coming back at his opponent with three cards, um, threatening potentially lethal. That's fair. 
I just feel so strange. Why the the second attack in the chain or the first attack in the chain? That's the first thing. Well, would... the mounting anger yeah. has an on hit effect, um, and so blocking it for four and preventing the on hit effect could potentially block five I, damage. I get mounting. I was more or less confused about the weapon, unless he doesn't have a way to give swarm and go again. Well, he probably has another three block in hand. Which um, did he end up blocking with another swarming? No, he only blocked with the one. Okay, so. Because he only has one card in hand, so he had to have blocked with three cards. Yeah, the second card he blocked with was an E strike, or the third, he blocked with E strike. Oh, he blocked with an E strike on the third chain link. Okay, so that yeah. that makes sense then, because he had another three blocks. So he's trying to get full value out of his block. So now you'll see he's at a he's got his opponent four life less than where they started uh, for the other turn cycle, the last turn cycle, and now he just has to basically dodge. Um, he's got fourteen life, three blocks. So like his opponent has to do 17 or 18 damage to actually threaten lethal and so if he's able to keep his hand here then then he's actually in a hugely hugely um, beneficial spot so now he'll get his five card hand he stops the second chain link which i'm still not sure why he's stopping the second chain link there i get well the rising resentment actually has an on head effect doesn't it yeah so that one actually yeah, is a, important. An on hit effect, plus it was a two attack, so right. the equipment claim blocked it. Right. Yep. That makes sense. Kind of I forgot about the on hit. Yeah. But, you know. So we got three more coming in here. That would put him to eight. He's still got two cards in hand, no resources floating. Yeah, I agree with the block with Command and Conquer. This is going to allow him to. Almost certainly, he's not going to be able to. Get the last. Oh, I don't know. This is this is interesting. He's just gonna take this damage almost for sure, and then he's gonna try to figure out what his opponent's doing with the last card, Snatch. That's a, that's a rough one. Well, um, so the thing here, Snatch can't be given go again, right? Oh, why did you block that for five? Oh, the channel was full blocking. The channel. Was oh full. wait, no, 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 no. He had uh, spreading flames. He had spreading flames. Or does that only affect Draconic cards? That only affects Draconic cards. Wait, was the last card before it a um, Cinderclaw? Might have been. Can't remember. Yeah, the, the yellow a... brand? Because he let, he let the yellow brand hit, didn't he? Yeah. And then so he made it Draconic, and then, yeah. Okay, or, or actually it doesn't even need to hit to make it Draconic. Yeah, so that makes more sense. Yeah, you're correct. He did just reveal a blue off his uh, Ravenous Ravel, though. That hurts. So my big question is here is why block the um why block that at all? Because it doesn't have go again and tie flippers can't give it go again. Um you know if you don't block that here, like you can you can play the channel out heroic nimbleism, attack with go again, and then attack with sword. Did he and have like, an earth blue? You don't have to keep it around. Who cares? Well did he have any blue? I don't know what the second card he blocked with was. I, know, I just saw the chance of heroic and something. He blocked with CMH, Command and Conquer, and this round? Or, no, that was last turn. I need to keep yeah, up I don't a know little what the better. Card uh... other than what heroic was. Hmm. So he was able to keep a whole, whole hand here? Uh, I think he blocked with that attack on the chain. Yeah, pretty sure that's was blocking, right? I know he moved the helmet up there oh he was determining what okay so he blocked with the the mask too okay so we're gonna go another cutting flames? yeah if he has a zero cost That's attack in hand this could pose a problem i'm gonna assume that he does i will say that uh it's nice to see that the five player hasn't made the mistake of attacking with ember claw as the third hit because it doesn't actually trigger mask yep I'm like, it's just such a common thing I see with new ninja players, like, forgetting that Mass says attack, third attack to hit, or th third attack action to hit, not right, third attack. Right, right. I learned that one the hard way way back in the day with Ira. That was, that's, I think that's one of the reasons when new players pick up this game, I always recommend the Ira starter deck because it was designed for new players, right? Like, it is like the pinnacle of, like, this will teach you the game perfectly. 
Um, it yeah. has defense reactions, it has attack reactions, it has attacks, it ha and then as you build into it, you like you can add cards like Mask of Momentum and, and was things. It, and was it making it seven at the start of this turn? Six, I believe. Okay, that's just me missing something there then. I don't know. I was making sure, the weird part about Spreading Flames here is the only card it's going to buff is the Phoenix Flame. Correct. Not buffing anything but Phoenix Flame, and that's... And here's the benefit of Tide Flippers, because he now just doesn't doesn't just immediately die to like that's true to to, a, to it a sword swing you know yeah um, which I mean, with this hand he can't trigger sword with a two card hand I, oh this is a is really good one to have uh, if he has another zero for four in hand let's see. If the ninja player doesn't have the three blocks, then if he has another zero for four, this is gonna rip rip two more cards out of his hand. And then Nathan's in a very good spot. I mean, if it's a blue, it also rips two cards because you get to make a uh, oh rune make a rune chant and sword. So yeah, so it doesn't really matter what it is. I think actually, yeah. I thought, well, I mean, it could be like a red, not zero cost, and then he can't use it. And he just has to come in with sword, which pulls in one card, which is almost as good. Ooh. Yeah. It was a blue. Yep. Yep, does the same thing. Which the sword still requires one card. Yep, so he's going to get him down to one card and he'll have a full hand. This this is very, very good. And he's still got Tunic I mean, just in case his opponent's able to keep a zero for four so that he can keep a three-card hand. I think you take the Arcane. That way you can come oh, yeah. in with a attack back. You, you have to. Like, yeah. there's, there's, if you don't get you a card out of Nathan's hand, hand, the game is over. Yeah. At least this way, if he has his own zero for four, then like it forces probably a tunic plus a card. Yep. Yep. So here's the zero for four. And yeah. This is this is tunic plus block three, assuming that he got a block three. Yeah. If Nathan drew poorly, he just gets a block two. But at this point in time, like. Yeah. Oh no, he got it. And that's not where you want to be as five. No. So this has been a good game. As long as as long as Nathan can present two attacks, the game. Okay, Should, okay, yeah. So the sword swing is, is, is just game over. Like, the attack doesn't matter anymore. Unless he has, like, Oasis or Spike for some odd reason. Because that'd be, like, really yeah, bad. Here. I think that's his only way out, right? But yeah, because Oasis, Oasis or Spike blocks four on the weapon, right. which is kind of hilarious. And that should be good game. I don't like that he hasn't continued <laughs> yeah. his hand. He's like looking at his hand and figuring out how to block him, which makes me think he has something. If he has the Oasis or Spite, I'm going to feel bad for saying it. Well, it, if he has the Oasis, then he's still going to only have one card in hand, and he'll be back in the same situation. So This is true, but like, you're just waiting for Nathan to draw poorly? Like, as soon as Nathan... Because now he can't uh, clean block with yep. equipment. Yeah, the game's over. That. Good game, good game. That was a really, really, really close one. Nathan did a really good job figuring out how to get tempo back there at the end and and blocking what he needed to what block. What card he blocked with was with Channel Mount Heroic. Um, it, it was a, a it was a it was a yellow block. rabble that he blocked with the Channel Mount Heroic. If okay, that's what so you're. Yeah. That's sad. Okay, that makes more sense then.